Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, August the 14th. We're going to talk about something that's a little different today. Have you ever thought about throwing an axe? Not at somebody, but throwing an axe in a contest? Well, there is a charity axe throwing tournament that's coming up in Columbia, and this is to benefit uh, the American Cancer Society, right? Correct. I want to introduce you to Rebecca Hardsock and Dennis Blust. Pleasure to have both of you here. Thanks for having ne- us. Neither one of you look like you own axes or knives <laughs> <laughs> throwing. Well, who came up with this idea? I did. I went to the Axe House in Columbia just for fun one Sunday and then really had a good time. So then we were fundraising already and we just decided this would be a great event. To what, what do they do at the Axe House? That's where the event is. They, they throw have, axes? Uh-huh. They throw axes and knives and throwing stars and... Uh, <laughs> they okay. Have, they have wooden targets and uh-huh. it's they replace the wood as it uh, needs replacing. Uh, and it's, so it's uh, very safe to... So you to actually throw. take one of the smaller hatchets, right? It's not the, it's not the long handle. You hatch. can throw one of those if you want to. They have all different sizes. And you <laughs> throw it uh-huh. at a target? Yep. Okay. They do a demonstration for you, so it's very safe. Um, they have a distance that you can't cross, like bowling. Uh huh. Um, it's very safe. They make okay. sure you're okay. <laughs> so what you're doing is you're having a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society, and yep. you're asking people to sign up for this is in teams? Yeah. Yep, the tournament will be 16 teams, uh, teams of four. So that will uh, take place on Sunday, September 1st uh-huh. at the Axe House here in Columbia. It's south of town on Peachtree Drive. And then there, if, if you don't get into the tournament or if you want to participate in other ways, you can do, we have side games of the Ninja Stars and the Throwing Knives. That'll be at different targets and we'll have prizes available for that too. Mm. Okay, so you can either throw knives. <laughs> <laughs> You can either throw knives or you can throw hatchets. Yeah. Uh, but wh- whichever you do, you're raising money for the American Cancer Society. Yep. Correct. How much money are you hoping that you'll raise? If we get the full 16 teams, which we expect to do, and then we'll have silent auction uh, baskets to uh, do a silent auction and 50-50 raffle and then the throwing games we're we're estimating that we could do between four and five thousand dollars well that would be very nice Mm -hmm. i wish you the very best of luck do either one of you um have you done this before not a tournament uh, Rebecca has gone. She's thrown hatchet. For fun. She's yep. thrown axes. Right, mm-hmm. we know that. Okay. When you came in here today, I expected to see a holster with a <laughs> with a hatchet on it there. But I wish you the very best of luck. It's a charity axe throwing tournament for the American Cancer Society. Again, the date and the time. Sunday, September first, six to eight p.m. And if people want to sign up now. They can go to the Facebook event page for the Axe House, which is facebook.com slash Axe House Como. That's A-X-E uh-huh. House Como. And then we have links on there, and Rebecca's email address can be... Mm-hmm. If they want to sign up early, they can shoot me an email, give me a call, and I'd be glad to set them up. Okay. Best of luck, both of you. Thank you so much. And, and, and be safe with throwing those. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we'll do our best. <laughs> All right. So now we go from axe throwing to voting. And I want to introduce you to Brianna Lennon, who is our county clerk. Welcome to Radio Friends, Brianna. Thanks for having me. And what we have sitting between us is the new electronic voting machines that will be at the polls when? We expect to have these for the first 2020 election, which should be the presidential preference primary uh, in March of next year. So our presidential preference primary is March of 2020. Yes. And these should be there at that point. Now, what's different about these machines and what we have now? So first, we still do have a paper-based system. So the paper ballots that everyone is used to, that's still an option. That's still out there. Um, This is different from the direct recording uh, election equipment that we've had, which is about three feet tall. It opens wide and you um, make your selections on the screen. And there's a rolling tape on the side, but the voter doesn't actually physically get a ballot. This allows you to take a paper ballot, feed it into the machine, make your selections. It prints out the paper ballot, and then you feed that into the scanner, the same scanner that all other paper ballots go into. So 
you're voting, if you want to vote with the machine, you also then have a record of how you voted. It comes, it prints mm-hmm. out for you. So there can be no manipulation in the machine once you've done your vote. You get a paper right. ballot, and then you feed that paper ballot into the scanner. Yes. So this machine is not counting votes. It's not tabulating. It's just a printer of votes. So it helps if you have a visual impairment. There's the ability to plug in uh, earphones, and you can listen to the ballots. Uh, if you have some kind of uh, dexterity issue, it helps if you're not able to hold a pencil. So that's uh, the purpose of these machines. Okay. What about the possibility of hacking these machines? So these machines, just like our optical scan machines, none of them are ever connected to the Internet. Uh, the machine that we have that programs them because we write our own ballots and election uh, to set it up onto this machine is not connected to the internet. So we take great precautions to make sure that nothing is ever uh, interconnected or anything like that. And then we also have a system of seals and checks that the poll workers have to go through to make sure that the machine has not been physically tampered with. So are you saying then that there is virtually no way that if you're voting in Boone County that your vote could be hacked. The risk is extremely, extremely low, and the the protections that we have in place are making sure that everyone feels confident in the integrity of our elections. At the end of the day, uh, we make sure that everything is above board and it's triple checked and made sure that every person that is touching this equipment or working on this equipment has taken all precautions to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. Yeah. And it's fairly simple to operate if you choose to do this. It's very easy. Yeah, I can see down here where the headphones that you would put in if you're hearing impaired. Mm-hmm. And then you just simply touch the screen and... Uh, yes. So okay. you would you would take the paper ballot and you would feed it in to the machine. Uh-huh. So... We're just about out of time here. So it's taking that. So it's taking that, and then you would uh, start and make your selections. And then ultimately, this is what would be printed out of it. So this would have all your selections. Yeah. You can look at it and make sure that it's right that before it's right. you put it into the counter. Mm-hmm. All right, Brianna, thank you so much for coming by. And you're going to be doing presentations all around the county starting in September with this. Correct. Right? Yep. Uh, just watch our Facebook page and our website's Vote Boon Mo at Vote Boone Mill. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. And thanks for the integrity of our elections in Boone County. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Pepper P. Missouri.edu. If there's something you'd like to hear or see, I would love to hear from you. All right. Have yourself a nice day. Bye-bye.